Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast and happy Tuesday. Hope everyone's having a splendid, gorgeous, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious day. Speaking of supercalifragilisticexpialidocious girlies, hey girl, how you doing? That's a lot of words. I'm good. That's it. That's one word. That's one word. Such a snitch answer. Yeah, how are you? Good. (laughs) Literally, that's. That's like such a dead end in podcasting. It's giving Q Grant. Good. Yeah, Good. it is. It is. That's my energy today. No, I am doing very well. Thank you. I'm a little jealous because I heard that you guys are having a snow day and I see you're wearing moon boots and that's just like a vibe I would kill for. I know. Um, it's actually not like a vibey snow day, if that makes you feel any better. One, because it's a Tuesday. So like, you know, mer. Two, it's like flurries. It's like half rain, half snow. So it's not sticking the floor. Like the streets are just wet. It's not like a gorgeous white Christmassy vibe. There's really not much for you to feel FOMO about. That's really sweet. Thanks, Turdy Lou. You always know how to cheer me up. And you know how I feel about the snow in New York. It's heavenly for about 15 minutes. And then it's weeks and weeks of hard brown snow on every corner. Oh, you're going to slip and hurt yourself. Like it's, it's not all it's cracked up to be in the movies. Not a lot of things aren't. So true. What else? Um, I actually had two stories I wanted to share from Lisbon yesterday that I forgot to share. The first being that I can't believe I didn't even like come on here and tell everyone I was literally hit by a car. Right. No, but right. You sound, I was literally hit by a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That right was like, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I saw your story. I was hit by a car. Cause you know, one of my favorite things about traveling abroad and just not even abroad, like other cities is they all have that scooter thing, you know, Lime and Bird. It's such a fabulous way to get around town. I've done it in Austin. I did it in Rome. In Rome, I'm telling you, I saw the whole city in one day. Like it's so fast to get around. It's really great. So when they had it in Lisbon, I was so excited. And we ended up in this like really busy part of town having lunch and there was so much traffic. We're like, okay, so let's Bird back to the hotel it'll be like fun and it'll be a great way to see more of the city but lisbon is like not the type of town built for birds like they really shouldn't have them there it's so hilly like the craziest inclines so all four of us me margo emily and ben are scootering we're getting up this cobblestone hill me and ben like our scooters stop halfway because like honestly we weigh too much like it, it couldn't do it margo and emily like make it all the way to the top we're halfway on this crazy hill and we have to start pushing our scooters jackie I actually cannot imagine like a more hellish endeavor. It was giving cardiac hill, remember? Yeah. When we, Jackie and I went to camp, there was this truly horrendous hill, like one of the worst hills ever. And they called it cardiac hill because walking up it will literally put you into cardiac arrest. That's where I was. But you know what? I didn't let that, oh, bless you. I didn't let that, you know, just sway me. I'm like, I'm still like, yeah, scooter, scooter. And then we get to like city center where there's like trains and cars and a million different crossroads. And I'm like starting to panic because there's really nowhere for us to scoot. So I'm like literally in the middle of the street and cars are honking at me. And this car is coming up from behind me and literally their rear view mirror knocks into me. Like, thank God I wasn't thrown off my scooter because it would have been so much worse. I caught myself and thank God also that Emily saw it because I know everyone else would have been like, you're so dramatic, you weren't hit by a car, but I was fucking hit by a car. And that was the time when I'm like, listen, it's over. I'm getting in a taxi, I'm parking my bird here. And then it was like a no parking zone. I couldn't win, it was fucking horrible. But I just wanted everyone to know like I was hit by a car and I live to tell the tale. And we're so glad that you could be with us, Turdy Lou. Uh, like I was Despite- bruised despite your circumstances. I didn't need to go to the hospital, but like one inch closer, hospital. I'm sure. And then the other story that I think you're gonna find hilarious, I literally had forgotten about it until this morning. So we were out and Ben was talking to like a bunch of the guys about, um, I think they were just talking about how like Ben can't take a good picture, you know? And one of Ben's like gripes with this world is famousbirthdays.com. That's like, the, it's like a website that just has like everyone's birthday on the planet. If you're like a Z-lister, you're on there. So. Ben's like so upset about the photo they use for his profile on famousbirthdays.com. On my way. Okay, yeah, check it out. I feel like you need context too. Yep. It's really old. His eyes are like half closed. He's smiling like seriously like a fucking freak. He looks literally very good. No. This picture? Ye- e- oh, maybe they changed it. He looks very good. Because the one that they used forever was the um, roast of Rob Lowe picture from the red carpet. Okay. 
So whatever. So Ben was telling this guy about the photo and he wanted to show the guy the photo that he was referencing. So Ben Googled, um, <laughs> Ben Googled Ben Soffer celebrity. But can you listen to me? I keep telling I stories. Wait. You're seizing. You're on your phone. You're on your iPad. Bitch, fucking listen I'm to me. I'm searching Ben Soffer Rob Lowe roast. It doesn't matter. Just listen. I am listening. I'm like talking to nobody. Ben Soffer celebrity. I'm so excited for what came up. So Ben Googles Ben Soffer celebrity and he finds the photo that he needs. And Ben was like really drunk and he probably could have just Googled Ben Soffer, but like he wrote Ben Soffer celebrity. And so, <laughs> so whatever, the guy sees the picture and they have a, get a laugh about it. But then like an hour later, Ben's talking to another group of guys about how they really all want to go to the Blink-182 concert at USB Arena in no. a few weeks. No. So Ben whips out his phone to find the date <laughs> and they all see Ben Safari, Ben Soffer celebrity as his most recent Google search. These guys, Ben, Jackie, roasted Ben to filth. Ben got in bed. He was so embarrassed. He was like, I don't know why I Googled that. Like I was drunk and I should have just deleted it. And then everyone saw it and they thought I was Googling myself Ben Soffer celebrity. And I was like, listen, it's fine. It's fine. It's horrifying and embarrassing. And I'm so glad it wasn't me, but it's fine. It's horrifying. Obviously those people and Ben will not be lifelong friends. <laughs> I hope they had a good night together because that was it for them. No, honestly, if like that was me, like I would die. I'm so glad. Like I, I was trying to make him feel better, but like between us, I'm like, that's really bad. That's really bad. I didn't want to like make him spiral more and become more anxious, but I was like, that's so embarrassing. And then like when you're when you're drunk and you just have even more anxiety about like, you know, something you did that was weird because you're drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Ben Soffer celebrity. Ben Soffer celebrity. Now I feel like I have officially recapped my trip to Lisbon, but like when I got off the show yesterday, I couldn't believe I ever forgot two of the best stories from Lisbon. I was literally hit by a car and Ben might as well have been hit by a car because it was so embarrassing. He was emotionally hit by a car. <laughs> I was physically hit by a car. Ben was emotionally hit by a car. Exactly. And I found the roast of Rob Lowe picks. It's not the best for, of either of us, honestly. <laughs> that was my first actually ever red carpet. I talked about it in my book because it was like such a big deal. Um, and I was so insecure, like about everything, my face, my body. Like I was just like not a happy person physically at that time. Um, and it was a dark day. I actually wore your dress. Yeah. Remember that dress? Mm -hmm. And like a Zara jacket, Zara, whatever. It's, um, it's honestly like not terrible. It's not an embarrassing look. Like it's um, okay. not something that like ages horribly. Okay, thank you. Like really respectable. Thank you, thank you for saying that. What was your like first photographed moment? Hmm. Actually, I think I know what it is, and I'm not. No, 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 say that it. doesn't count. Um, okay. First, like, no, when I like went to something that was a red carpet and had my picture taken yeah. on a red carpet. Maybe OK Magazine. Oh yeah, that was like one of the worst photos of me ever. Yeah. That's also part of my like saying yes to life philosophy is like I'm really happy with the way I'm looking right now. Like my face is sitting right. You gotta right. get your pictures and get images. Gotta I gotta get my pictures taken so I can replace the ones that exist out there. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like really if I'm being totally transparent with our audience, the impetus behind saying yes to life. I think that that is as good a reason as any. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Yeah. Um, so it's Tuesday. What does that, what does that mean to you? Mm, it means that we're just easing into this week. We have some fun stories, nothing crazy. We're not going to change the world, but we're going to talk about a bunch of people doing funny, silly things. Who knows, Jackie? We might change the world. Don't say that. Yeah, I think every day we change the world in our own small way. Jackie, that's beautiful. And at least we're not like destroying the world like yeah. so many other entities Con like we're not contributing to like the negativity and yeah the no but like we're not like you know uh a bank that's on the verge right. of collapse and can't give like right hardworking people their money so true you at know, least we're not a bank Ugh. could be worse things than being a bank i don't know i feel good about the honest work that we do here hundred percent jacks hundred percent so that's enough for me now tell me how is rolled Oh, he he gave us hell last night. He he and I have a little cold, both of us. So nothing like crazy, but just enough to make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And he was up a lot in the night. So we were up a lot in the night. But he seems great today. Like he's same That's old rolled. So rolled. Like ruin everyone's night. Wake up. Sprite light energy. What's up? What's for what breakfast, everyone? Yeah. I'll hey guys, have pancakes. Up. Hey guys, get up. It's seven. Come on. Hey mom, Time what are you party. making? What are you making for breakfast? 
Uh, well, he did have pancake, and I had Ooh. bagel, which he then wanted my bagel. I was like, no. Ugh, these kids, like, always taking everything and he's you have. desperate for my coffee. I'm like, yeah, I'll leave it here. You could have it in 20 years. Imagine Harry drinking coffee. Like, so cute. It's also disgusting. Your coffee? Yeah. Because mm, I just that. have, like, Nespresso with half and half. It tastes like coffee that's, like, a real, real coffee. Real coffee, right. But I know he liked my little cup Chiara Ferragni X Nespresso and how is LC number two I feel like we haven't even spoken about in like the baby in your belly totally that's so us um good that's so us good you know just I'm so happy in my second trimester it's so much more Better. pleasant than my first trimester I have more energy been running some errands been driving a little bit Yar yeah, girl got her nails done if you're watching on the YouTube I have a manicure for the first time since November Ugh. shout out and I'm really just excited. Like I missed having a manicure that like it looks that is 100% perfect, not chipped. It's just Once nice. Once it gets chipped, then I'll be like, I miss having bare nails that I didn't have to upkeep. It's just nice to look down at your hands and like not feel ashamed. Yeah, no, and I've got nice hands. Plus like with my prenatals, my nails are growing long and strong. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to dress them up since they're looking so gorgeous. Because she's a girl with freedom. She can go where she pleases because she has a license and a Tesla. I have my Tesla and I finally got my charger installed for my Tesla. Oh, good. That was holding me back a little bit, even though Zach like did take it to get charged for me. Um, so I had enough battery, but it's like now that I have my charger, I am completely set. Like first I got my permit, but I still need my license. Then I have my license, but I don't have a car. Then I have a car, but I need someone to drive with me. Now I, and then I have a car, but it doesn't have battery. So now it's like, I still would like when someone drives with me, but I need to. Yeah, now you just need a parent or guardian. Yeah, I need a turdy. You need a turdy. Well, I have a, a trip planned to come see you. A very quick trip at the end of this month. One day in and out. Just enough time to kiss Rold. Let Kayla yell at me. Mm -hmm. And let Levi watch the yelling, the abuse. Um, and then I'm coming back a few days later for a good amount of time. So Jackson and Claude are going to be back together again. Can't wait. Can't wait to see Can't Rold. wait to like, drive you around in my Tesla. I can't wait to be a passenger princess too and like be in like you know you've been quite a distracted distracting passenger princess for the many years I've driven you around especially when I was younger and not so confident I mean the only car accident I've ever gotten into was 100% your fault um so I'm excited to be that for you can't wait make content Totally. Sing, choose the music. It's and awesome. it's really fun choosing the music in the Tesla. It's like a big iPad and you just pull up Spotify. It's all there. It looks like Amazing. the Spotify app. Like it's so Amazing. Easy. I'm so looking forward to the relaxation of being in the passenger seat. Well, it's not like that relaxing because you're still driving with moi. Yeah, it's true. You're a very tense driver. I feel like your shoulders are like up by your ears. Yeah. Yeah, it just depends. Oh, and to get into a groove, it's good. And I have to know, like, where I'm going. I, I always course. map out my route, you know? No, but also having to adhere to a map while you're still, like, not that comfortable driving. And, like, you take one second to look to the GPS and you feel like in front of you, like, everything's going to crash. No, I know. But that's why, like, the whole time that I'm driving, I figure out where which what direction my next turn is. And I stay in that lane yeah, the course. whole time. Of course, of course, of course. Unless it's the left lane. Oh, do you not fuck with the left lane? Like, not if I don't have to, just because I don't want to slow everyone down. Right, no, and then people honk at you and cut you off. It's, like, embarrassing. Yeah, no, it's just, like, I just, I don't want to draw attention to myself. Like, I'm not embarrassed yeah. that I'm driving the speed limit. Like, I'm really not. You should be. You I'm should not. Be. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> but I'd like, rather Do you not drive below the speed limit? What? Do you drive below the speed no, limit? No, Okay. But I'd rather be with people who are more my speed. No, like more, you know, like like minded individuals. Like minded individuals. Is there anything better? No. 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 Um, so we've got a great, great show for you guys today. And if that's all she wrote, then that's all she wrote. Yeah. So without further ado did it do it do, here are the fast five stories that you need to know. And the fast five stories that you need to know are brought to you by Caraway. Get a head start on spring cleaning with Caraway. Their thoughtfully designed sets and complimentary storage make getting and staying organized easier than ever. You can now save 10% on the full suite of Caraway products from their internet famous cookware to their newly launch launched food storage set. 
So their high quality ceramic coated kitchenware is free of PTFE like Teflon. It's free of lead. It's free of cadmium and other toxic chemicals. And their kitchenware comes in a variety of chic shades that all include contemporary easy access storage solutions. So their naturally slick surface means minimal oil or butter for slide off the pan eggs and easy cleaning. There's so much about caraway to unpack. Like one, the surface. Oh my God. No longer the days of like scrubbing, scrubbing, mm. getting literal carpal tunnel just to get the eggs off the pan. They clean so easily. They work really well. They're really beautiful. So it looks good in your kitchen, not like cluttered and gross. And they're super easy to storage. If you don't have a ton of storage space, like in an apartment in New York City, uh, there's not like drawers full of like mismatched pans and pots and, and covers. So again, it's non-toxic, it's easy cooking, and it's well-loved. Over 40,000 people have raved about their caraway kitchen. So now it's try time for you to try it yourself. I feel like whenever Jackie is cooking on social media, you'll see her using her caraway. You know, the once a month I get in the kitchen, I exclusively use caraway, and I'm always watching washing my caraway because it's in the sink every morning because Ben only uses it. Like, we have so many different pants. He only uses the caraway one. I really should just toss my other ones. So visit carawayhome.com slash toast10 to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit carawayhome.com slash toast10 or use code toast10 at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Today's episode is also brought to you by Thrive Market, our go-to for all of our grocery and household essentials and the convenience of getting it all quickly shipped to our doorstep is a huge time saver. So uh, if you become a Thrive Market member, you can save money on every single order on average Jackie and I are saving over 30% each time. Getting that big Thrive Market box to your house once a week, once every tw tw two weeks, it's nothing better. What are some of your favorite items you've discovered? Because they have really good, they have the stuff you know, and it's really easy to discover new brands too. Yeah, they also have Thrive Market branded things. So for all of my like cooking needs and cooking supplies, like I use their olive oil spray, avocado spray, um, the, their granola like they have they make their own products too and like it's just so great because it's a marketplace with clean food so really yeah. anything that you want to get there you don't have to like, do the vetting you don't have to walk through the grocery store and look at all the ingredients like if it's on thrive market it is uh, thrive market approved Thrive Market approved. Yeah, and so the filters on their website save you a lot of time because whether you're looking for like gluten-free snacks, non-toxic cleaning essentials, you can curate your own shopping experience with just the click of a button. And when you join Thrive Market, you are also helping a family in need. Their one-for-one -one membership matching program, basically you join and Thrive Market gives. So join Thrive Market today and get 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. Go to thrivemarket.com slash the toast for 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. That's... T H R I V E market dot com slash the toast, thrive market dot com slash the toast. Thank you, Turdy Lou. You're welcome. First story, little romance news becoming a little more legit. Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny oh, dating yeah. rumors are heating up as they left the Oscars bash together. Oh, I didn't see this. I thought I saw they went for sushi with a group. Yeah, there was some group activity, but now Kendall and Bad Bunny were seen leaving Beyonce and Jay-Z's 2023 Oscars after party together on Sunday night, further fueling rumors that they are romantically involved. It's unclear if they arrived together, but they were photographed skedaddling from the soiree in the same vehicle at the end of the evening. While she attempted to cover her face with her hand to avoid the paparazzi, he seemed a little more relaxed around the cameras. Earlier in the evening, she went to Vanity Fair's annual Oscars bash alongside Haley Bieber and her sister Kylie. Then it seemed like they were going to an after party. There was an outfit change and they call Kendall from the party bus and they're like, we're here, come out. So I think she went with them still to this Beyonce Jay-Z party and then left with Mr. Bunny. Uh, by the way, I'm really obsessed with this pairing. Like the more photos I see of them together, the more I really like think about how they're so perfectly matched from, you know, fame to looks. And I feel like they actually, not that I literally know either of them on a personal level, but I feel like their personalities would vibe too because she's like chill, cool girl. I like to drink beer. I'm kind of weird and nerdy. And like, I, I see them being a match. I really do. And I, I think this is great. I've said it once. I've said it again. Like the family needs something fresh. They need something right now and I think this could be it especially like what if they go to like the Met Gala together obsessed if they go to the Met Gala together I really like them as a couple and I do feel like if you're leaving an after party together in the wee hours yeah. alone like you're hooking up no for sure and this is like keep in mind you know sharing a after, car after no but after a few dates so it's yes. not just like they're met at the party and like they're gonna, you know, boink tonight, but it's like there's a yeah. relationship that's brewing. 
And like, keep in mind, you know, sharing a car for us mere mortals is a method of convenience. But these people have a surplus of everything, drivers, cars. So it's a, it's a specific thing to share. That means you're going to the same place. Yeah, no, and Kylie had a bus for them. She could have gotten right. back on the bus and she didn't. No, like there were so many options for her in terms of transportation, but she chose to drive with Bad Bunny. And I'm choosing to believe that that means something. It does mean something. And it means something really good and hopeful for all of us. Yeah, I like this. You know, for Kendall, I really thought like we were not going to see her like dating anymore because I really thought her and Devin Booker were OTP. And while I am still grieving the loss of that relationship, I kind of love like single Kenny. Like I kind of forgot how before, because she was with Devin for a while, like she really is like this bachelorette, like this gal about town. She's, you know, the it girl of fashion, but she's also on reality TV. And she just is like, she's kind of everything of the sort. So, you know, she dated Harry Styles. Like she really can, can date whoever she wants. And like Bad Bunny is very much like upper echelon of like eligible bachelors and Kendall's just out here like pulling guys like this like Bad Bunny and Harry Styles and like it's fun to watch you know as a as a mortal yeah but in the words of Kendall it's none of your business where I throw this pussy Kendall said that yeah you didn't remember that that tweet throw this pussy yeah that's what she said no by the way someone, that has to have been like a fake tweet that no went viral. Claudia no someone was like there was a story about how Kendall had dated like a couple NBA players and someone like n commented on it nastily. Uh -huh, of course. About how she's being passed around by NBA Ooh. players. Oh, she said, they act like I'm not in full control of where I throw this cooch. Okay, by the way, that's like my new response to everything. Like when everyone's like, oh, are you on Ozempic? It's literally none of your business where I throw this cooch. Like that's, <laughs> that's literally gonna be my go to. I think I'm gonna change my Instagram bio. But I liked pussy better, no offense. I don't like the word cooch. No. Uh, a cooch makes it a little more, a little less pornographic. Yeah. You know? But I like love, we've had this conversation. I love the word pussy. Not in the way that like people in porn. I don't. The word and I wish I knew it was cooch. That way I didn't have to have said it. Oh, I like the word pussy. Like, I think it's like so sweet. But we had this conversation like three years ago on the toast and I, the morning toast back then. And people were like not agreeing. But like, we just grew up in a house where the word pussy was like a cute word for vagina. Like, oh, little pussy, you know? Yeah. And like th th there's been like sort like she's talked about this tweet before I think because I think people thought that like maybe Chloe wrote it for her or something she was like right. no and the sisters were like that no. is something Chloe would say Kendall wrote that herself that's the thing like I feel like we don't really know Kendall yeah because that's a crazy thing to say from the girl that like we thought was just very chill right no, you know kind of nerdy not like other girls yeah hmm. maybe she isn't like other girls. Sounds like she might not be. Actually, not in an ironic way, but like in an actual way. So it's just a good reminder that she is in control of where she throws that cooch. And perhaps the other night, it was thrown in the direction of Bad Bunny. And if it is, even though it's none of our business, I just want to know, I support it. I support it. 100%. And I just think the lesson from today's show is like, let's all be in control of where we throw our cooch, you know? Yeah. Take, take, take that, you know? Be in control. I love that. Mm-hmm. Are you ready for our next story? Uh, Gobble me, swallow me, drip down inside of me, quick jump up before you let it get inside of me. Are you ready, for, ready for our what? next story, which is a twofer of ex run ins, potential ex run ins at the Oscars? <sighs> I'm obsessed with this, obsessed, obsessed. First, Austin Butler and Vanessa Hudgens have an awkward run in at the Oscars after party. So unfortunate for Vanessa. Like, really, could, the timing could not have been worse for, for her. Like, the universe wanted wanted to ruin her night yeah the actress was caught on video looking down at her phone seemingly in an attempt to avoid eye contact with her ex as she walked past him austin butler at the vanity fair oscars party at the time he was standing next to sharon stone waiting for a car outside the swanky event so he's standing on the curb with sharon stone and they're both tall people already and vanessa are mini queen is walking in front of them but i think she's on the street so she's like already short and now she's shorter before she's about to cross in front of them she sees that it's austin so she's looking at her phone he doesn't see her until she's passed and then he sees what had happened he's like ooh, yeah and it's just so unfortunate because like the area in which they were was actually enclosed but sharon and Austin Butler just happened to be standing in like this open area where the paparazzi across the street were filming and taking photos. So not only did we get a film interaction of this like entire awkward moment, there's also now paparazzi photos of like literally Vanessa beelining across, standing directly in front of Austin Butler and ignoring him. Like it's so unfortunate. Like it's it's horrible. Yeah, but it's 
Inevitable? Question mark? <gasps> oh. <laughs> Literally. No, but it is like, it, and it's so crazy how when you date someone in the business, like you're going to see them around and it's just wild that they were together for 10 years it's not like it's not nothing any old ex it's literally like an ex-husband yeah no and like when he first got cast as Elvis like it appeared as though they were on decent terms like she was on Kelly and Ryan saying like I've always wanted this for him he had actually like credited her being like it was actually her idea like so it seemed like they were still supporting one another and then slowly but surely like that stopped and then Vanessa recently commented on that meme like making fun of Austin's voice so it's clear that there there is bad blood yeah when at first I thought maybe it was amicable no there's totally bad blood and she's engaged now, so that's yeah. good for her. She walked by with a ring on her finger. Yeah. He's with Kaya Gerber, also good for him. It's yeah. just fucking awkward no matter how you slice it. No, I know. And it's like, I'm happy for Vanessa that like at least she's like keeping up with him. Like he really left her and like ascended to fame. Like he was a Disney star, the Carrie Diaries. Oh, sorry, Nickelodeon. The Carrie Diaries when they were together. And then right when they broke up is like when he became this big star at the Oscars. And like, you know, what? I'm glad she's at the Oscars too. Like, oh, you thought you could ditch me and go to the Oscars? I'm here too, bitch, on my own. Yeah. Like good for her. At least we have that. Yeah. Well, Part B to the story, someone who wasn't in the mood to see an ex. Rumors are that Tom Cruise missed the Oscars to avoid seeing Nicole Kidman. Yeah. The Tom Cruise allegedly feels the need to stay far away from his ex-wife, Nicole Kidman. The Top Gun actor was noticeably absent from the 2023 Oscars on Sunday, despite the new movie being nominated for six awards and it really being his movie. He was reportedly MIA because he wanted to avoid an awkward run-in with Nicole, whom he divorced more than 20 years ago. A source told the Daily Mail that Tom was not there because she was there and he did not want a run-in. But insiders, other insiders say that... Uh, his absence was not personal and instead the result of scheduling issues. What do we well, think? Well, I think if if true, like it's entirely possible, like the Oscars is Nicole Kidman's domain. Like she's nominated all the time. She's always in shit that's being nominated. He's like really like not, like I know he's a movie star, but he's not like an Oscar like guy. Like that's her area, you know? Like that's her territory. Was she nominated this year or in anything that was nominated? I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Like, she's queen of the Oscars. Like, she always goes. Yeah. She's been going for the last, like, 20 years. So yeah. I could see him, like, bowing out. There's, like, I feel like nobody even really talks about their marriage. Like, there is so much there. Clearly, there's a lot there if he's li avoiding the Oscars because of her. But I just, I don't know Tom Cruise at all. I don't know him from Adam. You don't? But I feel like he wouldn't let he something back like down. this stop him. Yeah. He's Especially like, a, like it's his movie. It was really his year yeah. at the movies. Like everybody's talking about Top Gun. You can't talk yeah. about Top Gun without Tom Cruise. I don't think that he was going to like be shy and be like, no, it's awkward. He's also 60. I don't think 60 year olds get awkward. That is true. And I do agree. I, th I think personality wise, I think what we know about him, like from Scientology, he's like, he's like a beast. Like he doesn't back down from a thing. Yeah, he so does his own stunts. He can't see his ex on the carpet. No, that's totally fair and totally a really good way of looking at it. He doesn't seem like the type of guy to back down from like a potentially uncomfortable. Like, like if he wants to do something, he's fucking Tom Cruise. Like he gets it done. You know, he thinks he's like toxic male. Yeah, he's not like skirting around Nicole Kim in 20 years after their yeah. divorce. It, is Tom Cruise single? I was just wondering that. I, he's publicly single. Like he's not yeah. publicly in a relationship, but he's got to like have I don't know how, I mean I know he's like rich and famous but I don't know how anyone would want to be with him like when you look at Katie Holmes and Nicole Kidman like how they both ran from him and like how serious and like deadly their divorces are he seems so toxic like the Scientology of it all had Nicole's their kids together Nicole and Tom's kids don't talk to Nicole because she left Scientology yeah like, that's fuck like that's but he could date a Scientologist. Just, yes, he could. I guess if you're like into Scientology, that's like the most eligible um, bachelor out there. King. King of right, the that's universe. Like, that's like the bad bunny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Can't relate. He's also like not cute. There's but. a lid for every pot, Turdy Lou. Oh my God, ain't that the truth? I mean, Buster Murdaugh has a girlfriend. So if you're out there, you know, feeling like there's no hope for you, just know there is. Yeah. Because that freak... Not only is he like the weirdest looking motherfucker of all time, 
but uh, his family. Uh, he has a girlfriend, so keep going on those apps. It's gonna happen for you. It is gonna happen for you. There's a, that's so true. There is a cover for every pot. Yeah. Caraway.com slash toast ten. And at Caraway, it's not like one of those pots where you can never find the cover. Like it's mine, so true. it's just like so clear which one's the right so one. True. So true. Between Caraway and Thrive Market, like you're gonna have an amazing meal. Ugh, I could use an amazing meal. What are you gonna have for lunch today? So I don't know about lunch, but I'm actually was going through my cookbooks t this morning looking for a dinner recipe. And what'd you land on? I haven't found something that like looks like what I'm craving. I gotta get into another book. I've actually been thinking like today I'm gonna switch up my lunch. Cause I was saying yesterday, like I ate so poorly in Lisbon. I'm trying to have like actually like nutritious meals. And I feel like I really need some roughage. I still haven't made a poo. Yeah. Um, but I can't really eat a salad. Like that's just not how I was built. But I'm thinking a wrap. Wrap is so good. What about a smoothie? It's I'm such really a good smoothie. way to like shove lettuce into things. Like I'll make a smoothie and like I'll put so much spinach in it. But when you blend up spinach, it tastes like nothing. It's like green water. And then yeah. you add all the good flavors. It's like, oh my God, I just had three cups of spinach. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'll think about it. Like I really, I think a wrap is a good place to start for me. Yeah. For lunch. Maybe a smoothie for snack. Maybe. Maybe. With like a little protein I, for you. Actually, you like, get a lot what? of, you probably have more protein than me in your day. You eat chicken at every meal. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not. My protein, I'm good. Yeah, no, protein's a concern for me. I don't use protein Ruffage? powder, though. Ruffage? No, I, I don't know her. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll get into, like, a half big Harvest book because I want to I wanna do... I've been feeling like I get so many reels cooking videos and, like, mm -hmm. chicken is just not what I'm feeling right now. Meat, not at all. It's fine. Tomato base, not really either. Mm. But, like, you know, a light salad, like an orzo salad. You know what I mean? I yeah. feel like HBH has some good recipes. I need to do get my, into it. I need to do my research. And then that's going to be my outing for the day is going to get the ingredients for my dinner because I'm trying to drive every day. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. Thanks, Turdy Lou. I'm glad you approve. Yeah, well. Are you ready for our next story? Is it our, what is it? Our third? It's our third. Yeah, I'm ready. Tyler Cameron revealed he was only had $200 when he was dating Gigi Hadid. So this interview is going viral because Tyler Cameron, Cameron is talking about, one, when he dated Gigi, and I don't think he's ever gone into such detail. Mm -mm. And two, he's talking about the financial aspects of dating Gigi Hadid when he just came off of a reality show. Right. The reality star enjoyed a brief two-month romance with Gigi in 2019, shortly after his stint on The Bachelor. He appeared on Monday's episode of the podcast Trading Secrets, and he disclosed his lack of finances at the time. So Jason said, quote, he goes to me, dude, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I've got $5,000 in my bank account. I don't know what my next job is, and I'm dating Gigi Hadid. Tyler corrected him and said, not even $5,000. I had like $200. You wow. know what I mean? He said, I'd be going on dates. Like, this is in my early days of living in New York City. I'm living on Matt's bean bag. I have no money, but I'm like the happiest I've ever been because like the world is wide open to me in New York City. I can Aww. do whatever I want. He recalled calling his dad from the bathroom to ask him for money to pay for the date he was on. I'd be going on dates. I'm like calling up Pops in the bathroom. I'm like, Pops, I don't think my credit card's going to go through. I need you to send me money right now. That's and he, so cute. And he's like, you got it, son. So go get it. Oh. Um, Jason asked, when you go on a date with Gigi, you only have $200 to your name. How do you pay for it? Do you ever have a story? Like, how are you managing that? Tyler explained that you're just crossing your fingers at this point. At this point, I don't even know what a credit card is. I got Aww. a straight debit card. So when you hit zero, you hit zero. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just crossing my fingers, hoping it swipes and it just keeps swiping. No, that's so funny. I've often wondered about the logistics of when Tyler was dating Gigi, but I'm not, I'm less focused on the financials of it all. I'm so curious about the funeral. Like the that's funeral. to me, one of the great wonders of the world is like who, what, when, where, why, how, did Tyler Cameron, who was like literally been on three dates with a girl, ended up flying to the Netherlands for her grandma's funeral? Like, the questions just are, are endless. Yeah. You know, they're both single right now, sort of. Yeah, wasn't, Gigi was linked to Leo. But then, then Leo, Leo was, was linked, linked to, to that child. Yeah. And then she went back home, I think. Yeah, but and then now they were Gigi also. And Leo, they keep saying they're at the same parties, but like everybody's right. at the same party. But there are only so many parties for cool people. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know if they're together, but they are still, they are both single right now. But I feel like they weren't, Gigi and Tyler weren't like OTP. It was really like a moment in time flash in the pan. Like you had to be there, you know? Yeah. But what's also funny is like, 
she's obviously so successful. He just came off. I, I'm sure she didn't know the extent of his finances, but it's right. like she's still not paying for the date. <laughs> no, by the way, and you know what? I respect that about Gigi. Yeah. She's a woman who wants to be taken care of. Like your financial situation is irrelevant to me. You're paying for dinner. Like yeah. that I am truly on my way to becoming one of the world's richest women. Oh, you don't have a pot to piss in or a bed to sleep in? Let's go to Carbone. Figure it out. Yeah, no, like- You'll find a way. <laughs> We, we stand at, you know, she's a traditional chivalrous queen. Yeah. Um, obviously, Tyler's in a better financial situation now, which is, you know, good for him. Yeah. And it's good that he can look back on that time and just and not like focus on, you know, the stress of the finances of it all. But really, like, it makes sense that it was the happiest time for him. He was like on top of the world. He's dating Gigi. Like, he's beloved. He's moved His to New York City. His life changed in an instant. The world really opened up to him. Like, I imagine it was so exciting. And he was just like ready to grab life by the balls. Right. Because before the show, he was like working in construction in Florida, like, like lived a very happy, simple life. And then within like a couple of weeks, he was a nationwide superstar, like yeah. known by everyone. And then on top of that, to not only come out on top from the franchise, but then to get to take it to another level that nobody had ever done before, which is like dating a celebrity, not only a celebrity, like the world's biggest supermodel. How could that not be the happiest time of your life? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So just fun factoids from behind yeah. the scenes. Jason Tardick is always getting people to like open up about how much money they have or had on his podcast. I did his podcast once. You should check it out. It was a good episode. I didn't I didn't reveal anything. I don't, I'm not <laughs> into this. I'm not into this whole culture like demanding financial transparency from everyone. Like you want to be transparent about what you make? Love that for you. Don't fucking ask me, bitch, because I'm not telling you. Yeah, there are some things that are just timeless. I think talk not talking about money is, is one, of, one them. of them I think there's times where it's beneficial but like it's not a prerequisite no there's existing. times where it's beneficial especially in like really corporate environments where like they don't allow you to talk about your your salary so that you don't make more like that's toxic I get that no but that's um, not what people on TikTok are demanding of others no the, what people are demanding in this culture is like total financial transparency about everything especially for influencers it's like girl mind your own fucking business yeah like, just know I'm never going to tell you. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Because you know what? I'm gatekeeping. Sure. That's what they no, call it now. No, it's not because you're no, gatekeeping. That's what they call it. No, I'm saying that's what they oh. call it. Because you're not going to help other women. How's that going to help uh, anyone? Why is it my job to help other women? No, but why would Nobody that help, help another me? woman? How does that help another woman? Explain Like, it. to let her know her worth, I guess. No, your worth is like, it's safe for your podcast. Your worth is your listeners. Not because you're a woman. Yeah. No, I just like, I like not to be like, let's be really honest. This is gonna be probably one of the most honest things I say. Like when I get up every morning, like I'm looking out for me <laughs> and only me. Like I cannot bear the brunt of having to like help other women, you know? No, but I, but even if you could bear the brunt, like that's just dishonest to say that Claudia Ashray should share this information because it would help other women. It, it wouldn't, it, it really, really wouldn't. No, and like, that's not to say, like, let's say there was By a the woman. By the way, I'm one of those people who just I said know, woman. I know, I know. Why I know, does I that happen it. to me only on this show? I heard it. I I'm heard it. like, it's, someone's messing with me. I just want to clarify, like, that's not to say, like, if there is a, like, if there is a person, what's with women? If there's a person who helped me, I help them. But I'm just not out here helping for the sake of helping. I'm not that person. No, and it's like, if you go to it, like a dinner with like one-to-one -one with influencer, or aspiring influencer, or, or, and they're like starting out, like in that situation, you can be helpful. Course, like, girl, you are not getting paid what you deserve. Of course. And by this the way, is it's industry. worth noting, I do that a lot. Like people, right. I, I find people like are always asking me for like advice and stuff. But again, and I'm more than happy to give it. That's not what the public is asking you to do on TikTok. Yeah, no, the public is like, you have to make a video and tell everyone what you got paid for every single thing and how much you pay in taxes And that's going to help women, Turdy Lou. Don't forget it. Right. And I don't, I don't support women if I don't do that. Well, you know what? Maybe I don't support women because I've met some of you and you're the worst. And that's just like not what it takes to support women, but... Okay. No, no. I've said this once. I'll say it again. And I've kind of been like really kind of refining my thesis on the whole women supporting women thing. Um, and I just think it's worth mentioning. Like I support people. And it's worth mentioning that some of the most vile human beings I've ever met in my life were women. I would say m all of them were. Um, so I'm not just going to be out here blanket supporting women. Because like what have you said about me? Because that includes those people. Right. What have you said about me? question mark yeah so I'm just I'm, still, I'm like always refining that thesis about women supporting women it's changing all the time you know just like but that's be where a I'm decent at. be a decent person period like, right and then I will I'll do anything for you yeah 
but you're no, not but just like, you're get, a decent person. You're not just gonna get my support and my advice because you're a woman. No. That doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. Are you a good person? Are you charitable? Are you kind? Are you generous? Mm -hmm. Question mark. Are you ready for our next story? Question mark. If it's the next story that's brought to you by Perfect Bar, exclamation point. Looking for a protein well, that bar was that technically, if it's, I think that was the question. Are you ready oh, for our next story? It was, if it's it the next story that's brought to you by Perfect Looking bar. for a protein bar that actually tastes good? Well, look no further than Perfect Bar. With their lineup of fresh from the fridge protein bars, Perfect Bar is exactly what you've been looking for. No chalky artificial aftertaste here. They're made with freshly ground nut butter, organic honey, and 20 organic superfoods. Perfect Bar has a variety of products like protein bars, little snack size bars that are all so good and good for you. You'll be sure to find something you love. My favorite, I've said many times, dark chocolate chip, peanut butter, a little sea salt on there. It's gorgeous. I love that you keep it in the fridge because the chocolate gets like hard and cold and it's really delicious. Um, they have a cookie dough texture. It's creamy. It's full of flavor and they're unlike any other bars out there. The snack size that they now come in is great because they're packed with up to six grams of protein and 150 calories. So a little goes a long way. Throw it in your purse before a long day. Throw it in your purse before you're traveling and you'll always just have something to keep you so you don't start getting like hangry on the plane. Um, they're made with whole food ingredients. They contain no artificial preservatives. Perfect Bar is stored in the fridge. So you grab one after a workout for a quick bite while you're out shopping and you'll feel good about what you're snacking on. Perfect Bar knows that it'll be love at first bite. So for a limited time offer, they're offering you a chance to try their refrigerated protein bars for free. That's right, free snacks. Listen up. Here's how it works. Sign up for email or text, upload a picture of your receipt from your local grocery store, and they'll reimburse you for the cost of one bar. It'll go directly into your Venmo or your PayPal account. All you have to do is go to perfectsnacks.com slash toast to get a free perfect bar today. That's perfectsnacks.com slash toast to get a free perfect bar today. Today's episode is also brought to you by Nutrafol. 30 million women are impacted by weakened or thinning hair. If you're among them, know that you're not alone and that there's a solution that you can trust to deliver results. Millions of Americans experience thinning, bless you, she sneezed on it, it's true. A lot of people experience thinning hair for a lot of different reasons. I honestly never really had an issue with this up until a few months ago when I had a, like a, cha a change in my diet, which can really be the trigger for... Um, shedding which is what I was experiencing and Nutrafol when I was looking for something to take everyone I know recommended Nutrafol and I had a really good experience with it it's the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement it's clinically shown to improve your hair growth the thickness the visible scalp coverage and it supports healthy hair growth from within so it targets the five root causes of thinning which can be stress hormones environment nutrition and metabolism and it does that through whole body health over 3,000 top doctors and stylists recommend Nutrafol as an effective and high quality solution for healthier hair in a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. So you can grow thicker, healthier hair and support the toast by going to Nutrafol.com, enter promo code TOAST, and you will save $15 off your first month subscription. It is their best offer anywhere. It is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. So get that $15 off at Nutrafol.com, which is spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com. Promo code TOAST will get you $15 off and free shipping on every order. Nutrafol.com. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome. Our next story, Avril Lavigne tells a topless woman to get the fuck off the stage at the Juno Awards. Queen. Avril Lavigne smoothly handled a topless protester at the 2023 Juno Awards Monday by telling the woman to get the fuck off the stage. The singer had been introducing perf uh, performer AP Dillon during the Canadian Awards show when the woman crashed the stage with a message written on her back, save the green belt. Initially, Avril ignored the protester, but then turned around and swatted at her chest as she said, get the fuck off, and added one more time, get the fuck off, bitch. A male security <sighs> guard then escorted the woman off the stage. It wasn't made entirely clear if, or immediately clear if she was kicked out of the venue entirely, though I would thought she would. This evening's host, Marvel star Simu Liu, later comp, and, um, Selling Sunset Star. You see me, Leo, yeah. <laughs> Later complimented the punk rocker for handing the topless lady like a champion. Ugh, I just fucking hate people who do shit like this. Whether you're doing it like just because you you like to do pranks or because you're protesting something, like I don't give a shit. If you are disturbing and being like a public menace, I fucking hate you. Like I always think about that YouTuber um, who's like, I think he's... Italian he's like in Milan and his thing is like he'll go to celebrities and pick them up 
Have you yeah, seen him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I fucking hate that guy. Like I wish bad things on him. Like I fucking hate people who do shit like this. Either for attention, she was clearly protesting something and you know what? I don't fucking care. That's like, that's no, what you- And now I'm, in t- I'm inclined to side with whatever you're protesting. No, and now I'm inclined to destroy the green belt as opposed to saving it. Yeah, I, I think there's been a lot of recently like climate protests that are so fucking with art. dumb. The art stuff, they're like throwing olive oil on it. The Mona Lisa, which they're all protected and they don't wind up doing any damage whatsoever. And it's like, what did you do for your cause? Because now we all just hate you. Hate you. Perfectly said. Like, what did you do for your cause? We all just fucking hate you. (laughs) And you know what? I hate your cause too. And I'm so impassioned by you being such a menace that I'm going to do everything in my power to actively work against your cause. Like, I don't even care what your fucking cause is. Yeah. I hate people like this. Like, remember when that girl, it, it's different because some people do it for like a cause, which I think is counterintuitive and stupid. But some people just do it like for pranks. Like that girl who literally hopped the stage at the Chanel fashion show right. in Paris all those years ago. And like Gigi had to literally threw her off the stage. I hate people like that. Like to, uh, I, I really just can't. Like I can't. One thing, that'll never be me. Yeah, no. Pranking for prank's sake is also one of my least favorite things. It's probably things. worse it's probably worse. Really? Because I think it depends on the prank. Like, I think that that Chanel runway thing was like annoying and stupid, but like kind of harmless. Harmless. Victimless. Yeah. And because it was handled so well, it just is like kind of like a funny anecdote. Maybe if it had, you know, they were chasing around the stage, it ruins the show, whatever. Could have yeah. gone another way. Um, but just pranks for pranks sake, like I think is so stupid. Beyond. But also prank, like uh, whatever this is stunt protesting for your cause also stupid no but also like it's an award show like there are probably minors there and you have your tits out like stop right oh we didn't even talk about the tits of it all and then like the security guard has to get her off the stage but she's like he can't touch her right yeah no like but claudia you have to support women including this one right right thus bringing me back to my aforementioned thesis but this woman doesn't support avril so now what now what do we do the girls are fighting (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I just hate shit like this. And it's it's so layered as to why it's problematic. Like one, just stop. Two, like you can't be naked in public. I'm sorry. Like we live in a civilized society. This is a, a music award show. I'm sure there's not a lot of kids there, but there probably is. They don't even see your fucking tits, okay? Stop. Yeah. She is wearing pasties. Doesn't matter. Oh my God. Crazy. I just hate, Avril handed it like a champ. I will say, so the security guard was very slow to react. And then when he, once he got up there, like he couldn't really do much because she was naked. So it was like a tough position for him to be in. Um, but I definitely think it could have been handled a little better. Yeah. Yeah. I am just hope that Avril was able to find solace in the arms of her boyfriend, Tyga. Hopefully. That's all you can hope for. A girl can dream. Mm-hmm. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? Yeah. We got to have some Bravo news in here. Yeah, we have to. It's been such a big month for Bravo. Like, And everybody wants every scrap of an update. And we both found this interesting because you sent me this clip. Ow! What? Oh, my God. I just knocked my microphone into my chin. Oh, my. That hurts so bad. Like, really hard. I'm okay. First the car and now this. Dirty. You have to take care of yourself. I know. I'm, I'm bruised. Bruised Listen to your body. My body's saying, take a nap. Always. Andy Cohen issues a PSA for the upcoming Pump Rules episode. He said, you won't believe it. Andy Cohen has issued a PSA over the shocking upcoming episode of Vanderpump Rules as the fallout from Scandaval continues to unravel. He said, Bravo fans are not going to believe that Wednesday's episode, tomorrow, has not been edited since the news of the affair came to light. He said, there is something I want to say. Guys, you're going to watch Wednesday's episode. You are going to think that it was recut, okay? It was not recut. This is the episode. He warned that fans are going to be shocked to hear a conversation between Raquel, Lala, and Katie as he promised viewers that the footage was not touched I believe him I watched it on my sick bed Wednesdays the episode that's going to air in two days now it's tomorrow I watched it and I was like people are going to think we did this or move stuff up the conversations that go on between Katie and Lala and Raquel are not to be believed in light of what has come out this is how it was going to be shown which makes it all the more shocking you won't believe it right I'm curious what what it is and what we would have thought if we didn't know this like but when I heard this, I was so excited. I actually am having like a little viewing party tomorrow night. All my friends are coming over. I'm like, guys, we have to we have to watch. Oh my God, look at you. Well, I just want to say one thing, yeah. if I may, because I, I heard this clip and then like a few hours later, I had this thought, which is that 
we saw this um, preview for the episode where Raquel says to Lala, like, well, good thing you don't have a man to bring mm-hmm. around that way. Like, Raquel won't be fucking Leeching. around with him. Yeah. But in this moment, you do have to remember that Raquel just found out that Lala hooked up with James while she was dating James. So, so I think true. there is a little bit of resentment where it's like, oh, if you had a man to bring around right now and I'm single, like, you know, uh, just give you a taste of your own medicine. So, it's actually so, so true. Lala has actual like nerve to say that given what she did to Raquel right. and James. So just that one conversation on its own, like a little bit, I feel like Raquel is pissed at Lala. Like yeah. you hooked up with my boyfriend. Yeah, if you had one, you better be shitting your pants to bring him around. Oh, you know what? You're so right. But if I will be shocked by the conversation between the three of them, if anything about like Sandoval or yeah. Schwartz is mentioned. But when it comes to the Lala thing, it's like we can't forget that Lala just admitted to hooking up with Cheating. James while Raquel was dating him for years, engaged to him. And like she still is like, heartbroken over the relationship and just like a mess over it so yeah. like not to give her a pass for saying anything but just that one line like it, when you put in that context and she, like it, I feel like she said it as a way to get back at her do you know what I mean no by the way you're 100% right I totally forgot about that part because it's layered and once you add the layers it all kind of makes sense like she's entitled to be a little bitchy but Andy said there's a conversation not just that one thing so you know I don't I, I don't think that's what they're he's referring to it has it has to mention Sandoval. Like, if that's what Andy's being so dramatic about. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. Like, the way I've been so reinvigorated. Like, I... I I get like I get into bed every night and I put on Bravo like and I'm just like I'm always eating up like Watch Happens Live has been so good because there's so much going on in real time and the shows are so delayed and it's just it's very exciting oh I did watch Summer House last night right I figured you were going to talk about it let's hear what what's going on let me tell on. you it's really not good um and Danny Pellegrino actually had like a whole Twitter thread about it and I shared it on my Instagram because it's so right it's like we're at a place where like a lot a lot of these people on the show have been on the show for so long and they have these established dynamics and they have friends and they have people they fucking hate and they're no longer like playing pretend with the people they hate like Amanda and Lindsay don't get along Paige and Lindsay don't get along and maybe a few years ago that would have been a storyline like why aren't we friends like let's make up but like neither of them care like they're just not friends period and there's such a gap between like the old people and the new people like Gabby and Sam who are like in their t- early 20s and young and fabulous and like Kyle who's 40 like Danny Pellegrino said it best he said Kyle is older than Jason Hoppy and Bethany Frankel were when they had their show Bethany getting married like let's put that into perspective why are imagine if they were in the summer house exactly that's what it is so it's just like I don't know it's not giving the way it needs to give I just feel like so many people are checked out like Paige and Sierra have literally done and said nothing like they feel so checked out it's not working this group dynamic I feel like they're hitting a place where like Vanderpump rules hit before all this happened where it was like old people young people we don't know what to do and it felt like this huge disconnect between the group um the drama like I'm actually confused like like I don't get it and you know what everyone and basically like Danielle blew up Italian night because she said she didn't trust Amanda and then like Amanda started you know fighting with Lindsay and Danielle and Danielle started the whole thing and she just kind of like watched everything burn down and then she starts screaming at Carl for not defending Lindsay and like you know what first of all stay out of other people's business like she's so mad this episode because like Lindsay and Carl they're out at a bar and Lindsay and Carl are just like hugging and making out all the whole time and she's like well what about me I'm like that's fucking weird you have a boyfriend you're 30 years old like get a grip yeah so she's just like inserting herself and it's clear like this is where the divide is starting to happen because we know Lindsay and Danielle aren't friends anymore so she's starting to like you know talk to Paige and Sierra and Amanda about how you know they're moving too fast Carl and Lindsay she's just being like a really bad fucking friend no but she's so extreme it's like I either need to be the, in a throuple I need to with burn you. this whole house no, down I need to, to be in a throuple you. with you or I'm gonna talk shit about your relationship yeah like oh oh I'm mad everyone needs to know or like I'm riding for you I'm gonna burn this house down with my love for you like she's so extreme she's honestly like a like a terrible reality star because she's so inconsistent and up until this point she has not had a storyline about her it everything up until this point has revolved around her being Lindsay's mouthpiece and like it's actually getting annoying yeah so this two weeks ago was like not a great episode and then this week was not a great episode either I don't know why Andrea is not a full-time cast member I don't know why literally this guy Chris who isn't you know the most interesting person is the only single guy in the house like it's so weird this is a very weird season yeah I think I feel like they need a shake-up and that's kind of what saved Summer House the first time they like brought in all these new people and I feel like 
unless it's a show with like a magical cast like the Jersey Shore that just like keeps regenerating itself when you have this sort of premise like you do need to keep it fresh and the problem is is that so many people are fan favorites because you know them over the years and you love Mm -hmm. them but they don't like give much to the show because also it's like at this point why do I want to ruin my reputation they have like, too much to lose they've they, all started businesses they're all yeah successful influencers. and it's like I like being liked by the fans I don't want to get in the mud a hundred percent and like the thing with the Jersey Shore which is a great example is like there was so much drama because it was every night back to back out all night out all night new couples new hookups and like they're trying to make it seem like they're partying a lot, but like they go to the club and then they put the timestamps like they got home at 1130. Like they're really not, it's not like a summer share house party. It's not that, but like they're pretending like it is. Yeah, but also like Jersey Shore was is a really good formula, you know, a summer share house with people who are down to clown, but they just hit the lottery with the cast. Yeah, it was, every, everyone was a star. Yeah, and like the interpersonal relationships like that Ronnie and Sam, you mm-hmm. know, took off. But like Mike was kind of always in love with Sam. And then we had like j- th- like the little J-Wow. Vinny and Snooki. Vinny and Snooki. Paulie and, and pa- J-Wow hooked up. Yeah, and, and th- there would always be those like underlying things. They were yep. always friends. And then other people would like come in. Roger, Gianni. Mm-hmm. But it, Roger. And, but it would always be like, oh, you know, but Paulie hooked up with J- Like it was just right. Yeah, no, it was, I could literally write a dissertation on the beauty of Jersey Shore. Like, it is the perfect show. Yeah. And I'm so, I'm honestly so grateful to have been influenced by it in my youth, honestly. I am who I am because of that show. Yeah, and the people and the cast, they were all just like, so themselves, so... And they had nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Even as the show got bigger, it, they still didn't have anything to lose because... They were so rewarded for being themselves, you know? Yeah. No, and nobody like stopped getting involved in the drama because they all started making a lot of money. Like, if anything, the money encouraged them to be even worse. Yeah. It was such a good show. Yeah. No, Summer House is not a Jersey Shore. And never will be a Jersey Shore. But also, like, the Hamptons are also just like not like that. No, it's true. It's like more of a classy affair. Like, you you don't act that way. No. I mean, people do, but... It's something's not working. And and at, at the beginning of the season, I was like, oh, this is good. But the longer we go, like this measly drama is like not enough to sustain a whole plot. And if something's not working, something's got to give. Yeah. I honestly feel like, and this is not a statement on, on Amanda because I really like her, but I do feel like it might be Kyle and Amanda's time. Yeah, I agree. Like they've been the center of the show the whole time and it's worked. And now they're just at a place where it's like they're married, they're focused on their business. They're really not. Kyle like gets drunk and says crazy things just so he's like still a core part of the show, not because it's like a a true feeling. But it's like uh, he would be better suited to just like act his age and and step into like a mentor sort of role. It'd be better for like, I think his self mm-hmm. it'd be better for his business it'd be better mm-hmm. for the show and nobody wants to watch like a 40 year old no like staying things. up till three in the morning with a bunch of 21 with year Sam. olds it's so weird I actually really I really like the new girls though I think they have a lot of potential like Gabby's very funny for sure but what's a bunch of great new girls without great new guys thank you thank you it's really weird it's bizarre it shouldn't I know it's de- it's definitely harder to cast funny interesting party guys like girls are always just like more is more but my god to give us one new guy and take away those two I even would have taken that mute Alex from last year like it's literally not that hard it's not hard there's so many people who want to be on TV there's especially like in New York that are like fake influencery they definitely they need, the a, they need a gay guy for sure yeah and they need more single guys for the girls yeah no it's really not that hard like it's not no rocket science it should always be like an equal somewhat equal you're equal four and four it's, it's literally five like five. 11 to two <laughs> it's crazy it's fucking weird yeah and doesn't like chris feel weird being in that house with like a bunch of girls like at least kyle is married to one but like no i think it's weirder for kyle to be in a house with a bunch of girls yeah I chris guess. is like this is awesome yeah yeah it's not weird for i don't think kyle feels weird but i i find it weird uh, yeah that he's there something's not working that's 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 my thesis of the day. Okay, cool. I could see how that is true. Yeah, um, that's our show. Mm, thank tins. you guys. 
so much for listening to the Toast of the Millennial Morning Show where we deliver the past five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So at Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeart Radio, CastBox, all the places where we listen to podcasts, find us at Toast, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you guys have an amazing day. We'll see you tomorrow for the big day. It's hump day. The big day. Bye. Love ya. Bye.